we are going to start lying face down. And you don't need any props for today's practice. If you have a mat, great. Um, if not, you have the floor, a towel, a blanket underneath you, as long as you won't slip when we go to the standing parts. So I'll come face down, and if you're wearing glasses like I am, you might want to take them off, at least for these few opening moves. We're coming all the way down to the belly, and we're going to find a comfortable position. In fact, I'll take my glasses off for a moment. One option is to form a diamond with the thumb so that you can place your head right in that little space. Another option is arms down by your side, head resting in one direction. Or you might have your arms crossed, head propped on, up on, head propped on your arms. So whatever position you choose, and I'm going to prop up a little bit just so I can keep talking to you. Lie your body face down and start to grow heavy in your body. So feel the ground underneath you. This part, we're not focusing on the idea of water or fluidity, just allowing a heaviness to settle into our limbs, being supported by the ground. Drawing a few conscious breaths in, maybe feeling the breath expanding into your torso, your heart, the front parts of your body settling against the floor. breaths like this, a simple chance to rest a little bit, to pause at the start of our practice. And then staying in the face down position, we're going to prop up onto the elbows into a sphinx pose. So in the sphinx pose, your elbows can be under the shoulders. I encourage you to have them a little in front of the shoulders. Allow this to be maybe a little bit more of a restful or a comfort comfortable sphinx. So you are pushing down into your forearms to lift your chest and feeling as if you're drawing your chest forward a bit between your arms. From our sphinx pose, we're going to slide the hands in, flow up into a back arch or cat pose and then flow back to a child's pose. You can widen your knees if that feels right for you. You don't have to come all the way down. Your hips don't have to come all the way back. Your child's pose might be up here, whatever feels right. And then breathe, exhale back up into your cat arch. And on your next breath, flow all the way back forward into Sphinx. So it doesn't matter as much what it looks like. That's the little flow that we're gonna do Breathe with your flow, be fluid, breathe however feels naturally. So slide your hands in as you come up to your cat pose. Continue going back into child's. You might slide along the ground as you flow forward into Sphinx. Maybe your elbows need to be a little further forward if your back isn't quite warmed up yet like mine. And then one or two more times, sliding back in and up to cat. Back into some version of child's pose. Forward into sphinx. And I'll do one more with you. Breathing in. Flowing. And you see I'm kind of dragging my hands in with me. and then flowing back forward. Hold the Sphinx for another moment or two as you drop your chin toward your chest. Roll your neck around, loosening up in there a little bit more. You might look up a little bit and also take your ear one shoulder and then the other with your chin up a little bit. And then slide your hands in 
and we'll rise up to an all fours position. So all fours, your hands are right under your shoulders, your knees are right under your hips. So set yourself up to be comfortable, spread your fingers wide. This doesn't have to be an exact table shape if your hands are a little in front or a little wider. However that feels comfortable with you is fine. We're going to take one hand and we're going to place the fingertips behind the ear. So I'm going to take my hand that's closest to you. And as I breathe in, I'm going to open up, twisting a little bit open toward the screen. As I exhale, I'm going to tuck my elbow a little bit toward the opposite arm. And then I'm going to continue. So this is kind of a version of thread the needle. We're not going really deep into that thread under the body. I'm waking up the spine with a bit of twisting. We already did a bit of forward bending and back bending in our sphinx cat combo. And one more time. And then we place the hand back down, switch arms. I'll turn around the other way so I can still be facing you. This movement can be as small or big as you like. So hand behind the ear, moving with breath, breathing in and open, exhaling, tucking under toward the opposite arm. The goal is to get a little bit of a spinal movement a spinal rotation, but to feel really fluid. To make this smoother as we go through each one. And then maybe one more. Nice. Place your hands back down. Walk your hands in towards your knees and come up to a standing knees position. So from standing knees, we're going to do a version of a gate pose flow. I'm going to mirror you for this part. So take your right leg out to the side, toes pointed toward me if that feels good. If not, toes can be more pointed out and you can adjust your leg. Mine is maybe an inch or two in front of my hip bone. You can have it even further, so more toward the front of your mat, if that's just not feeling right to your pelvis or your pelvis or hips feel more twisted. So the position of the leg, what we're looking for is a comfortable, steady position, which is basically what we're looking for in all the asanas or physical postures. Find a solid base and then breathe in, raise your left arm up, so opposite arm to leg extended. Exhale, flow a little bit over your leg, but we're not gonna stay. Instead, we'll breathe the right arm up and then flow in the other direction. And so this is the idea. One arm up, flowing the other way. And moving with the breath however feels right to you. Now you could do it more like this, keeping the arms wider apart from each other. So again, it doesn't have to look like anything in particular. We're thinking more about what this feels like in the body, feeling a flow, feeling some lateral stretching. And if for you, when you go down to the opposite side, your fingers touch, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine. Let's do one more either direction, reaching down toward the floor and then reaching toward your leg. I want to hold for maybe a little breath here and then exhale. Come back through the center. If you need to wiggle a little bit in the middle, go ahead and do that. And we'll extend the opposite leg out to the side. So same thing, if toes feel comfortable pointing toward the camera or toward me, you can do that. If you want to have them out on a little bit more of a diagonal, find a spot that helps your leg feel stable for this movement here our knee of the grounding leg, your right leg, and your extended left leg. Well, that's our stability in this pose as we start to move with the arms. Inhale, right arm up and overhead. Slide down your extended leg. And then on your next breath, you can raise the left arm up, start to reach down the other direction. 
and continue at your pace as much as is comfortable for you trying to coordinate this with the breath. So flowing at a pace that takes your breath into consideration. And if you like, you can widen the arms. Maybe as you continue, you have a little bit more room to slide down the leg or toward the floor. If you do, that's fine. If you don't, that's not necessarily a goal that we're going for today. We're not trying to go deeper. We're trying to go more fluid. All right, so maybe one more each side, one more reaching toward the floor, one more reaching down the leg, perhaps a brief, brief breath hold here, and then breathe, rise back up, draw the leg in. Come to a comfortable position, lying on your back with your feet flat on the floor, your knees up, and your feet a little bit wider than your hips, maybe as wide as the edges of the mat if you're using a mat. If not, just judge how comfortable it feels for you. And the distance of your feet from your bottom, from your body, that's completely up to you. So I'm gonna scooch my feet out a little bit wider. And then, and your arms can be wherever they naturally fall, wherever is naturally comfortable. I'm gonna take both knees toward the direction of the screen. I'm moving with breath, I'm gonna lift through center and then take them away from the screen. So we usually refer to this move as a windshield wiper move. You can probably see why. After a lot of rain the past few days, it's actually a beautiful sunny day here. We don't need the windshield wipers. Not that I was going anywhere. <laughs> Yet this is a really nice flowing move to do in the body. It can help the hips feel fluid. So if your hips are feeling stuck or sticky or achy from a lot of sitting, lying down on the floor, you can do the seated as well. And swishing, moving your hip joints in this way could feel really nice. You notice I'm not rushing in this practice. I'm not counting out, all right, we have to do five more reps. I'm kind of taking my time to be fluid. Another quote I read about water is that water is patient. If you think about how it wears away, wears through things that takes years and years, generations for that to happen. All right, maybe just a few more here and then settle back through to center. You might have to do a clothing adjustment like me. <laughs> draw the knees in toward the chest. So both knees into the chest. Now when you draw your knees in, they can be closer together or wider apart, just like in your standing mountain pose. So you can always adjust to find what works best for your body. And then you can hold anywhere on the legs. Maybe it's your thighs, maybe it's on top of the knees, or you can not hold. You can keep your arms by your side. Holding just has your hands help support your legs. It's not necessary. It can feel more comfortable. It's up to you. So as we move through a flow with the knees, the legs and the upper arms, same thing. You can put your hand on your leg to hold or not. So keep one leg in. I'm going to have the close, the knee closer to, to the screen that I'm going to keep in. And then as you take a breath in, you'll extend the opposite leg and reach the arms overhead. And then as you exhale, you'll sweep the arms down, both knees back in, and you can hold your shins, your thighs, your knees if you'd like. Inhale, sweep the leg down again, reach long. And then we'll continue that flow. So every breath in or every exhale, however it makes sense to move with the breath, 
knees and arms come together. And then one arm reaches out long as the arms reach out long. Flow back through center and opposite. Continue at your own pace. You have the option of coming into a little ball as you come to center. Again, totally not necessary. If something about that feels better for your body, yeah, that's what we want. do one more on each side so this time I'll come in maybe being a little more tight stretch out long inhale knees in arms down or in stretch out long and last one both knees in and then let's stretch out for a nice big breath both legs out arms out overhead and draw the knees in. And before we rest, we'll finish here with just a little bit of a pelvic rock. So again, you can either hold your knees, your legs, or have your hands by your side. I like to hold on the top of my knees for this one because I can feel more of the legs move with the breath. So as I exhale, I draw the knees, the legs a little bit more toward me. And then as I inhale, I expand the knees away from me. You can see my arms straighten as my torso fills with breath. Exhale, inhale. So this can be thought of as a kind of a wave breath or a pelvic rocking motion. So when I draw the knees in and exhale, my pelvis tucks a little bit, my tailbone tucks, and then my lower back moves a little from the floor in the opposite direction. Just a few more times like this. Maybe looking for any last movement that your body, your spine needs. And then we'll take a brief rest to finish the practice. You can place your feet on the floor, maybe feet rest flat on the floor, maybe knees rest toward each other. Maybe you want that little bit of stretch more on the inner thighs and you, your feet come together in a butterfly. Or perhaps your legs stretch out long and more of a full Shavasana or relaxation pose. Any of those options is fine. So settle in. I'm going to roll up to seated. And as you settle into the rest you've chosen, now feel heavy with your back body be, being supported by the ground. So we started off that sense of heaviness with the front body face down being supported. Now see if you can sense the same support of the ground for the back body. So this will be a short rest for this practice. Take about three to five breaths in this rest. If you want a longer rest, I invite you to do one of my other practices, maybe adding on one of my restorative practices after this one, which will do a little bit of breath work and then you'll rest in a pose.